Upon mentioning the name Dunhuang, a sense of ancient and rustic history emerges. In ancient times, there were many border fortresses, but why does Dunhuang's reputation continue to shine? Today, let's step into this ancient city. That has captivated the world. In our minds, Dunhuang may be a shining border town in the vast desert, or a grand and desolate ancient battlefield, where the sun sets over the long river. Located at the westernmost end of Gansu, adjacent to Xinjiang, we now find ourselves above Dunhuang City, where we can clearly see a vast oasis, amidst the boundless desert and Gobi. Dunhuang City is situated here, representing the most typical terrain and landforms of the northwest cities in our country. The Dunhuang Oasis is closely connected to the well-known Mingxia Mountain, where the desert and oasis have coexisted for thousands of years. Let's zoom in on the map. Behind Dunhuang City, the Chilian Mountains and Altan Mountains converge, and the Dang River, originating from the Chilian Mountains, flows between the two mountains, passing through Mingxia Mountain and flowing into Dunhuang. The oasis has nurtured this place for thousands of years. But why is Dunhuang so important? First, let's look at the geography. Between the Qinghai Tibet Plateau and the Mongolian Plateau, there is a narrow and elongated passage, known as the Hashi Corridor. Named for its resemblance to a corridor, as it is located west of the Yellow River. First, let's understand the close relationship between this corridor and Dunhuang. More than 2000 years ago, during the reign of Emperor Wu of the Han Dynasty, established the four commanderies of Hashi here. Wu Wei, Zhang Ye, Jiuquan, and Dunhuang. Dunhuang was located at the westernmost end of the Hashi Corridor, serving as a gateway to the frontier at that time, and thus began its prosperous journey. After Zhang Qian's mission to the western regions, opening the Silk Road, Dunhuang became an essential transit point. From Dunhuang's Yumen Pass, one could travel north to Central Asia and Europe, and from Dunhuang's Yang Pass, one could travel to Western and South Asia, the Arabian Peninsula, and other regions. Simultaneously, it connected various ancient kingdoms in the Western regions. Dunhuang became the intersection of the Northern and Southern Silk Roads. Now let's take a global perspective. Due to geographical constraints, with the obstruction of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, the Mongolian Plateau, Tian Shan Mountains, and other mountain ranges, any foreign culture from around the world, wishing to enter the Central Plains, had to pass through Dunhuang. Cultures from all directions converged in Dunhuang, and the Mogao Caves at the foot of Mingxia Mountain are representative of the influx of foreign cultures into China. Today, Dunhuang is not only a shining business card for Dunhuang itself and Gansu Province, but also one of the four major grottos in China. It flourished during the Wei, Jin, Northern and Southern Dynasties, and declined during the Yuan Dynasty. It is also the largest and most content-rich collection of Buddhist art grottos in the world. Its rise is closely related to the social background of that time. During the Wei, Jin, Northern and Southern Dynasties, the situation in the Central Plains was turbulent, a large number of refugees from the Central Plains came to the Hushi Corridor, and the exchange of foreign cultures came to a halt here. The people living in this troubled era, in search of spiritual solace, turned to Buddhist culture for spiritual sustenance, creating a prevalent Buddhist atmosphere in society at that time. This was also the beginning of the prosperity of the Mogao Caves. Over the next 1000 years, countless grottos were carved here, forming the magnificent scale we see today. Spanning across millennia, they embody the exceptional artistic skills of ancient craftsmen, earning them the title of Eastern Art Grottos. Another representative landscape of Dunhuang City is none other than the Crescent Lake. On one side of Mingxia Mountain, adjacent to Dunhuang City, there is a crescent-shaped spring, which is known as the Crescent Lake. It is hailed as the number one spring in the desert. It has existed here since the Han Dynasty. Due to its ancient origins, all the springs in the Shabu Tian area have dried up, making it a wonder. Surrounding the Crescent Lake are towering sand dunes. Due to the terrain and wind direction, the sand and wind here rarely descend to the foot of the mountain, but flow towards the mountaintop. As a result, it has remained unburied by the desert throughout history. Next, we see Yangguan and Yumen Pass. One in the south and one in the north, they, along with Dunhuang, form a tripod-like shape, guarding the ancient western gateway. Most people are familiar with their names. First, we see Yumen Pass. Why lament the willows with a Chang flute? The spring breeze does not pass through Yumen Pass. These two simple lines of poetry aptly depict the grand and desolate nature of the border fortress and the geographical features here. It used to be the gateway for the western regions, transporting pearls, jade, and precious stones from the central plains, hence its name, Yumen Pass. Next, we come to Yangguan. I urge you to enjoy another cup of wine, leaving Yangguan without old friends. From here, if one continues westward, they enter the ancient western regions, where everything, including the people, 
geography, and customs, becomes completely different. Leaving Yangguan is like leaving one's hometown. The decline of Dunhuang can be attributed to several factors. First, the political and economic center. Gradually shifted southward, and Dunhuang was located in a remote area, inconveniently connected to the inland. Second, due to territorial and historical reasons. However, the most significant reason is that after the Yuan Dynasty, maritime trade began to rise, and the opening of the Maritime Silk Road. Maritime transportation gradually replaced land transportation and cultural and economic exchanges. Shifted from the inland to the coastal areas, the former glory of Dunhuang gradually faded away. As time passed and the world changed, the traces of the past thousand years were not buried in the desert. On the modeled murals, we can still glimpse the brilliance of Duanhuang's bygone era.